Tonight on TV5 News at 8, Route 68 takes center stage in Monroe Township. Details coming up. Declaring County jealous in the red. Find out why. And Pennsylvania Governor Tom Ridge pushes the northeastern United States upon European travelers. All this and more straight ahead as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. This is TV5 News, bringing coverage closer to home. Good evening and welcome to TV5 News. In our top story, Route 68 is under construction. I'm Dave Marsh. And I'm Christy Herman. Mark Despotakis joins us live with more details on tonight's top story from the TV5 Newsroom. Mark? Thanks, Christy. Well, you know, it's one of those sites that we all dread, those dreaded orange traffic barrels. Well, one Clarion County organization is pushing for more construction projects on Route 68. It's tonight's top story. Take a look. New roadway in a few years. PennDOT is working to replace this bridge that was ruined due to 1996 flooding. A temporary bridge is in place, but other improvements are in the works. And we are replacing that structure, plus doing a realignment of 68 to alleviate the bad curves around this bridge. When this project is completed, this bridge will no longer exist, but rather the water will flow through concrete yeah, tunnels yeah. some 40 feet under the new roadway. Some may wonder how projects the like this take shape. One. Local citizens groups like the Clarion County Route 68 Improvement Committee help to bring road projects to fruition. Uh, we um, formed a group with the idea that we believe that in order for uh, improved economic development conditions to um, develop, we needed a good highway system and we did not feel Route 68 presented a very good highway system to develop economic development. So we decided one of our first goals was going to be to try to improve the, the Route 68 highway. So this group takes their proposals to PennDOT and in fact will be at a PennDOT hearing tomorrow morning presenting more road improvement suggestions. You know, a lot of people at times don't think PennDOT is very responsive, but we found them to be very interested in meeting with us and talking with us and listening to our input. In fact, monitoring tomorrow's meeting, and we will let you know any information we have next week on our newscast at 8 p.m. Live in the newsroom, I'm Mark Despotagas. Back to you, Christy. Thanks, Mark. 137 students signed a petition that was presented at the September 16th Clarion Limestone School Board meeting protesting the new dress code. One student told our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, that she and others would like to see the school board modify the dress code or see that it is consistently enforced. The new dress code consists of pants no longer than the bottom of a student's shoe and tank top straps that must be at least three inches wide. TV5 contracted acting principal and superintendent Richard Stack Slack, who would comment on the cam would not comment on camera. However, he did give TV5 News this comment. The cause of the dress code were twofold. Uh, on the one hand, we have there was serious concern over safety issues, over things that were happening uh, last year in schools, Slack concerned over uh, wearing a certain attire that could possibly conceal. In, uh, weapons or in a, uh, other inappropriate items. Uh, second fold, we were looking at issues of ways and methods of improving student respect towards one another. Slack is looking into this matter and we will update you with new details as they become available. Clarion County Director of Human Services, Kay Rupert, said the county will probably not receive the whole $350,000 proposed contribution from Clairview Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. The Clairview Board of Directors agreed earlier this year to give the county up to a $350,000 contribution as a return on the county's portion of the human services budgets. Rupert said she is still compiling all of the numbers, but estimates the total amount of the county's portion for fiscal year 1998 and 99 was about $50,000 less than the proposed contribution. Rupert said a report for county mental retardation services must be completed before determining the exact amount of the contribution. 
Here are some new details on a story we brought to you last night. The Clarion County man charged with eight counts of sexual abuse of children is still in custody tonight. Samuel Labrier was arrested yesterday by the Pennsylvania State Police Computer Crime Investigation Unit. Labrier's computer contained more than 2,000 images of child pornography that was transmitted on the Internet. District Justice Anthony Lapinto stated the charges placed upon Labrier are felonies of third degree. He is scheduled for a hearing on October 5th. And as prisoners' medical bills top $30,000, Clarion County Jail Warden Daniel Warden is no closer to getting those bills paid as the September 15th prison board meeting was canceled. Prison board members, Commissioner Keith Martin and Sheriff Vern E. Smith, were on vacation and could not attend. Commissioner Secretary Linda Wagness reported Commissioner David Wagner was unable to attend the meeting, but did not offer an explanation as to why. Excuse me. The first phase of the ambitious $1.7 million renovation project in downtown Franklin is nearing completion. Pegged as the Franklin Streetscape Improvements Project, the work has been sharply reconfigured because of a need for money and a change in purpose. Originally, the work was encompassed several city blocks and extended over a period of four years. The $1.7 million price tag and four-year time period remain, but the geography has been dramatically squeezed. Started in August, the work is costing $122,000. The city has embarked its community development block grants allocated by state for the community improvements to pay for the contractor, Lewis Craft Company of Oil City. Allied Signal is about to close a northwestern Pennsylvania plant and put about 80 people out of work. The plant in Emleton makes wax for candles. A company smokes and cites the old age of the plant as part of the reason for the move. It started as an oil refinery 100 years ago. Frank and Stella Key are about to open their own personal care home. The Oil City Zoning Board denied the couple's request in January, stating that it violated a section of the city zoning ordinance. It prohibited personal care homes for the handicapped within 1,000 feet of one another. Several group homes are within the area. Last month, they appealed the decision, and it was ruled that the setback requirement violates a federal fair housing law. The law states it forbids discrimination against handicapped people in any sale or rental of housing. Knox Borough Council said next month they will consider what to do with a borough alley that has been the scene of several accidents. Resident Bill Dabinsky told council members he would like to see them consider making Koenig Alley from South Main Street to Municipal Alley one way. The Keystone School Board in Knox has agreed to contribute up to $35,000 to convert the district track to an all-weather track. Track boosters have secured $75,000 in loans from two anonymous donors. They have committed to raising the remainder of the money to repay the loans. Stipulations were placed on the loans. These included that the track must be completed by the team's spring season, which begins in late March. The track will be a six-lane all-weather surface with a degree bank that allows for faster times on the track. Authorities say a convenience store robber from Butler County turned a handgun upon himself as he was chased by police. A pathologist testified that the gun was against Tacoa Fisher's head when it was fired August 5th. The coroner in Pittsburgh will release the official cause of death today for the 22-year-old student at Slippery Rock University. A police detective testified at an inquest on Tuesday that cash and a mask were found in Fisher's car. He had robbed the convenience store at gunpoint in Leedsdale. A veteran bank robber from Pittsburgh Hill District was back in court yesterday. Rodnell Bolt was sentenced for the first robbery in 1971 and received an 18-year sentence for bank robbery in the mid-80s. Yesterday, he was sentenced to 12 years in prison for four bank robberies and held at Heist, a postal service business office in Manhattan. Bolt is 51 years old. Opening arguments are expected to begin today in U.S. District Court in Pittsburgh in a federal civil lawsuit brought by a state prison inmate. Charles Isley, an inmate at the State Correctional Institution in Greene County, says guards retaliated against him for filing grievances and lawsuits against them. He has named dozens of guards and state corrections department officials in the lawsuit. Isley seeks unspecified punitive and compensatory damages for civil rights violations, including two counts of excessive use of force. When TV5 News returns, find out what changes are coming to the surrounding roadways at Clarion Hospital. And more athletes stand trial in Williamsport. Just what they are being charged with, find out next as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. We've got two minutes. Help wanted. Immediate openings available for the most important jobs in America. Helping the organizations that help children. Whatever you can do, in whatever time you have, you can make a difference. To learn how you can help in your community, reach us at this web address and number. We're fighting for the children. Whose side are you on?
something to scream about. Get over here! <laughs> Get up! I can't. I'm talking to you. Get up! I can't. Stop crying! You're asking for it again! <laughs> For information about how you can help stop domestic violence, call us. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. When you're small, the world can seem pretty big. But these kids are learning more about it every day. Because in his spare time, Harry Cooper teaches the children in his neighborhood how to use a computer. And every time he does, he puts the whole world in their hands. Couldn't you do something? No, it's not your money. It's you we want. Just Come on, pick up that phone. TV5 News at 8, anchored by Christy Herman. Dave Marsh. Jen Bebavino with TV5 Weather. Don Ursich with Sports. Now from the news team bringing coverage closer to home, this is TV5 News. The Clarion Area Chamber of Commerce, Business and Industry is pleased to announce the Grand Marshal for the 46th Annual Bell Atlantic Autumn Leaf Parade and it will be Chris Kirkpatrick of the band in sync. The 46th annual Bell Atlantic Autumn Leaf Parade will begin promptly at noon on October 2nd. Parking will be available at the Clarion Mall, and a shuttle service will escort patrons of the parade route to Main Street in Clarion. Remember that TV5 is your home coverage for the ALF Parade. A Clarion County man appeared without an attorney yesterday. Gary Fisher appeared for his preliminary hearing without an attorney. Fisher is charged with shoving and spitting at the correctional officer at the Clarion County Jail and was ordered held for trial on Tuesday. Fisher then laughed hysterically at the district justice and clucked like a chicken. Fisher was placed in jail for allegedly violating Megan's law requiring certain offenders to registration for 10 years. He is also facing charges of molesting a 7-year-old girl in Clarion Township last year. The survival rate of a person in a cardiac arrest decreases 7% during each passing minute without medical attention. One way to prevent the loss of a life of cardiac arrest cases is with the use of automatic external defibrillators, an AED device that is used to analyze the electrical activity of the heart, the device that determines from the monitor monitoring the cardiac rhythm whether or not a shock to the heart is needed. Eric Schaefer, Clarion Borough Police Chief, explains how it works. This is a light pack. It's extremely portable. It's self-contained. It has its own electrical supply. It comes with an instruction card. Construction and renovation plans aimed at step improving step safety. Exactly what to do with it. There are three instructions. Turn on the device, apply the electrode pads, which are these objects right here. These go on the chest and side. Then you follow the prompts. You push the button. The device activates and it starts giving you vocal instructions. Construction and renovation plans aimed at improving safety at two intersections in Shippenville area are underway. Work also is proceeding on reopening the Interstate 80 truck way station in Beaver Township. According to an announcement last week by Representative Fred McElhatton, bids will be let this week for a project that will improve the safety of the U.S. Route 322 and State Route 66 intersection in Marianne. Monroe Township is making changing in its roadways today. Township supervisors have agreed to work with Clarion Hospital in a plan to connect Hospital Road with Dolby Road. Jim Gorley, a member of the building committee for the hospital, expressed that they need another exit. Gorley believes it is urgent to construct another exit from the hospital because the mall could at any time close the road to the hospital's traffic. Right-of-way has been given from the Clarion Psychiatric Center and from the Comfort Inn. They are still trying to gain the rights from the Mays family who owns a 50-foot section of the land.
taking a look at state news. A Somerset County man is in jail tonight and being accused of selling $1,500 worth of cocaine. Claire Ernst Buzer of Jennerstown is charged with three counts of each possession of a controlled substance. Possession with intent to deliver and delivery of a controlled substance. Police informants were sold a quarter ounce of powder cocaine on three separate occasions. A hearing is set for next week and Boozer is in jail on a $150,000 bond. New jobs are being created. The Pennsylvania Industrial Development Authority is making loans totaling $5.6 million to create 186 new jobs and save 793 existing jobs. The new markets for the companies are in Berks, Cumberland, Erie, Lebanon, Lycoming, and Philadelphia. Erie County Plastics Corporation is receiving the largest of the loans. Their plans are to renovate a building in Cory. The loan itself will help retain 480 jobs. A township in Northampton County that has disbanded its police department has been ordered to reinstate the department and rehire the police. Former Upper Mount Bethel Township Policeman Larry Sabatine says he would return to his old job if township supervisors do reinstate defunct police department. A state labor relations board examiner gave the order to the township supervisors on Monday. The cost of bringing the force back is estimated to be as high as $400,000. And a standout basketball player and two fellow students at Williamsport High School are headed for trial. They are accused of robbing another student of $8 as he got off a school bus. Basketball player Nasir Fields and Robert Young were in court yesterday for a hearing. The three 18-year-olds were ordered to stand trial on charges of aggravated assault, conspiracy, robbery, and other offenses. Police say the teens were waiting in Johnson's mother's van and attacked the other teenager when he got off the bus. Johnson is free on bail and is withdrawn from school. He could face an expulsion hearing. One of the other defendants is still in prison, while the third is also out on bail. A ceremonial groundbreaking is set today for a new $104 million UPMC Cancer Center in Pittsburgh. The new home for the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute, or UPCI, will become the largest physical site for cancer research and treatment in the state. It is expected to be completed by 2001. The new building will be named after Henry L. Hillman in honor of the $10 million gift the Pittsburgh philanthropist and two Hillman Foundation pledged towards construction. The FBI reportedly has subpoenaed Congressman Phil English in the probe of state lawmaker Tracy Seifert. The Meadville Tri Tribune says that the yesterday the English turned down over documents related to Seifert's request for help in getting surplus generators from the federal government for a fire department in Conneaut Lake. Two Pennsylvania Republican lawmakers say the federal government gives financial help to abortion rights groups, so why not to groups that advocate alternatives to abortion? Representative Joseph Pitts and Senator Rick Santorum are introducing legislation that would set aside $85 million each year to help fund private groups that run maternity homes, adoption services, and crisis pregnancy centers. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Ridge continues to, pardon me, his trip through England and Germany today after announcing a tourism package said to be the first for German travelers. Ridge and Quebec Deputy Tourism Minister say the package would take travelers through the beauties of the northeastern United States and into the untouched wilderness of Quebec. When TV5 News returns, find out how much damage uh, Hurricane Floyd has inflicted on North Carolina. Some interesting information will be straight ahead. Also, when we return, uh, find out how much damage Hurricane Floyd, oh, pardon me. Also, when we return, Mother Nature has more in store for us. Uh, Jen Bevavina will be joining us live from the Weather Center with its details. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. Late one night in Calvin Every week for the past four years, Stephanie has read stories to a room full of Savannah, Georgia preschoolers. Every week, the look on the children's faces is priceless. The love that Stephanie feels from every child has made her life a whole lot brighter. Even though Stephanie has never even seen their faces. To see how you can help in your community, join the Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel some real. On the big highway of life, only one safe place for kids. Fancy, baby. The front seat's not the best to drop out. Fancy, Don't want that big old bag to pop out. Fancy, baby. Put that booties in the back seat now. Fancy, baby. Have that in the kitchen, never be out. Give to remind you to put them behind you. Fancy, oh, yeah. Fancy, baby. You stay alive even when I drive. I'm sure some of you feel funny talking with your parents about things you hear in the schoolyard, things about sex, drugs, 
alcohol. But if you talk with your parents, maybe you won't feel as odd or be as confused or frightened. Watching TV as a family can help get these tough conversations started. You can talk about what you've seen and what you've heard, how it makes you feel. Parents want to talk to you. Get things started today. Ask your parents to call for these free guides, talking with kids and TV as a tool. His father left home today. I'll be there forever. Wait and see. He'll be twice as likely to drop out of high school. 30% more likely to attempt suicide. Cause I love you. Even if you don't live with your kids, your emotional and financial support gives them a better chance. I'll be the best friend you ever had. to TV5 News. Jen Bevavino is standing by in the TV5 Weather Center to update us on the area forecast. Jen? And I'm here with your local and extended Clarion weather forecast. Today was a gorgeous day in Clarion County. A bit chilly this morning, but towards the afternoon it brightened up. It got a bit sunnier, a bit warmer. Temperatures were extremely nice. Hopefully, we'll be seeing temperatures increase during the rest of the week. Taking a look at our satellite imagery map right here, you'll notice that the area we are in is precipitation free at the moment and we'll be staying this way throughout the rest of the week. We may be seeing some showers on Saturday, but on into Sunday, temperatures will be high and clear. Um, taking a look at our front's map, you'll notice that we are free of any cold fronts in the moment. You'll notice this cold front lingering above us, but we will not be seeing, it, seeing any of that. It's going to keep moving up. Taking a look at our highs, you'll notice we are high into the low 60s today. It will be getting warmer throughout the rest of the week. Taking a look at our lows map now, today's low was high into the 40s, which, oh, not high, but low. Um, taking a look at our precipitation map, you'll notice once again precipitation free and staying that way throughout the rest of the week. So it's looking like a pretty nice off weekend coming up. All right, taking a look at our, our traveling map, if you're doing any traveling this week or later this week, you'll notice that Towards the, eastern, towards the eastern coast, we are staying precipitation free. It's looking quite nice along the eastern coast. So if you're planning on doing any traveling this weekend down south or towards Florida, um, it, will be, it will be a nice ride. Um, taking a look at our five-day planner, you'll notice for Thursday, it will be windy with a high of 70, a low of 45. For Friday, sunny once again with a high of 69, a low of 50. For Saturday, sunny, maybe some showers. We'll see with a high of 73, a low of 46. For Sunday, sunny once again with a high of 77, a low of 51. And for Monday, it will be partly cloudy with a high of 74 and a low of 54. That's your Clarion area forecast. Back to you, David and Christy. And areas in North Carolina are starting to begin rebuilding after the area was hit by Hurricane Floyd. Power has been restored to almost everyone in New Jersey. Yet authorities requested that it stay off for safety reasons. In the downtown area, Franklin, Virginia remains under as much as 10 feet of water. Panic did start to arise when Mother Nature brought rain in the area yesterday. In Goldsboro, several caskets from cemeteries have been floating along washed out roads. Health officials report that there is no risk from the embalmed bodies. Cigarette makers have something in the future to look towards. The Justice Department is about to take action against them. Prosecutors will soon file a promised civil suit against major tobacco companies citing racketeering statutes. The government will be seeking to obtain more than $25 billion in smoking-related claims to health issues. The suit reportedly uh, accuses tobacco companies of collusion and consumer fraud, saying that companies conspired to hide the risks of cigarette smoking. Jurors already found Lawrence Russell Brewer guilty in the dragging death of James Byrd Jr. now decided whether he shall live or die. A jury in Bryan, Texas heard closing arguments this morning before beginning deliberations. Brewer was the second of three white men to be tried in the death of Byrd, who was black. On Monday, the panel found Brewer guilty. Byrd was apparently chained by his ankles to a pickup truck and dragged over three miles outside of Jasper, Texas. A Boston woman is accused of faking ovarian cancer. Chris and Clauderty raised as much as $50,000 in the past year from fundraisers. She is accused of using the money on behalf of her liposuction in a new car. Investigators say they haven't been able to find any evidence that Clauderty has cancer. Clauderty is being charged with larceny and should be arraigned in October on the 21st. The DA stated he'll eat his hat if it turns out she does have cancer. Uh, when we return, Don Ersich joins us with the latest updates from the sports world.
And Carolyn Kelly will give us an inside look into Tinseltown with the entertainment beat. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. Less crime is no accident. Programs like mentoring, job training, counseling, along with after-school activities are keeping kids from away from kids. Look around. You'll see that kids are in these kinds of sources of trouble. It takes you and programs that work. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT and we'll send you a free booklet. Call now and help take a bite out of crime. Where are the children Long time passing Where have all the children gone Long time ago Where have all the children Gone to graveyards by one Oh, when will we ever learn Welcome back. I'm Don Ersich with the Sports in Two Minutes. Major League Baseball is starting to heat up. Yesterday was the first game in the NL East showdown between the New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves, as the Braves br drew first blood and won 2-1. to one. Chipper Jones seemed to be the deciding factor as he hit two home runs, one from each side of the plate. This win put Atlanta two games up on the Mets in the division. New York still remains three games up on the Reds after they lost to the Padres 8-2. to two. These teams are still have six more games to play against each other in the next two weeks. In the American League, Boston is holding on to its playoff hope by defeating the Blue Jays 3-zip. Pedro Martinez got his 300th strikeout during the game as he broke Boston's old record set by Roger Clemens of 292. Yes, the Pirates are still playing solid ball, but it wasn't enough last night as the Astros beat the Bucks 6-3. This was the first win for Houston at Three Rivers in five games. Turning to football news, the Atlanta Falcons hopes for seeing the Dirty Bird looks hopeful for next year. Jamal Anderson is out for the season with a knee injury. He tore the ACL on his right knee on Monday night against the Cowboys. They started 0-2 the season. The 2-0 Steelers play their home opener Sunday against Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are 1-5 at Three Rivers Lifetime. And finally, let's take a look at the college football polls. The USA Today ESPN coaches poll has Florida State at number one, Penn State at number two, Florida at three, Michigan at four, and Nebraska rounding out the top five. The AP poll has the top four the same, but has Texas A&M at number five, and Nebraska at six. Well, that's going to do it for this week. I'll see you next Wednesday. Now back to Dave and Christy. Thanks, Don. Joining us now is Carolyn Kelly with tonight's installment of the Entertainment Beat. Thanks. Let's take a look at some of the activities going on in the Clarion area. Tomorrow, the University Activity Board Let's Have Fun series kicks off in 252 Gemmel at noon. And the CSL Plunge will be in the Gemmel Multipurpose Room from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. On Friday, September 24th, the BSU Roller Skating Trip will be at 6 p.m. And Michelle's Cafe on Main Street welcomes Franklin poet Deanne Goodwin along with the Open Road Open Microphone series. That starts at 7 p.m. Autumn Leaf Festival Week kicks off Saturday, which means the Autorama will roll into town on Sunday from noon to 5. The 5th Annual Clarion University and Community Cultural Night will be in front of the courthouse at 6.30 p.m. on Monday. For Entertainment Beat, I'm Carolyn Kelly, TV5 News. Thanks, Carolyn. And with a final recap of your Clarion area weather, Jen Bevivino joins us now from the weather desk. Jen? Thanks. Now taking a look back at your weather, tonight will be clear, we'll have, we'll, we'll have clear skies! Okay. I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. Thanks, Jen. That Thanks. That does it for tonight's broadcast. Be sure to tune in next Tuesday with at 8 p.m. with Christy DeZort and Brian Cook as they bring you continuing coverage of your local and state and national yeah. news. For Christy Herman, Don Ursich, Jen Bevavino, Carolyn Kelly, and the entire TV5 News team, I'm Dave Marsh. Good night.